Welcome back to this class on textile finishing. As usual, let us see what we have done till now. So till now we have learned in the last few lectures the flame retardants for textiles during which we learnt what are the general mechanisms which are operative. For example, condensation phase mechanism or vapour phase mechanism, these are operative. So the FRs work either from one mechanism or other. It is quite possible that one particular FR or a combination of FRs may actually be working on both the modes that is initially they change the uh, degradation path and later they decompose and act in the gas phase as well. So all that uh, we did talk about and of course we learnt something about the chemistry of FRs, various kinds of, for synthetic fibres are they different and also did mention some of the inherently flame retardant uh, fibres which could be man-made fibres and of course how do we evaluate uh, the FR treated fabrics. This is what we did. In the coming uh, couple of lectures, we shall be talking on finishing of wool. Wool is in some sense a little different fiber. It has a little different chemistry and little different morphology, particularly the surface morphology. So what are we going to do? Uh, in, we will talk about something what is called a felting. This is a term which is only uh, naturally was associated with the wool. Of course, now felting and the felts have uh, different uh, products under this category. Uh, it does not have to be from wool, but that is what we will try to learn. We will try to learn as to why wool felts, what problems do we envisage if there is felting, can this property itself be exploited for the benefit of the user and also we may be interested to know can we overcome this problem in case we do not want this problem to see and in general we are quite sure that the woolens have less problem of crease recovery. Uh, but can we make it better and so on and so forth. These are some of the things which we will uh, discuss in coming few hours that we will interact on wool. So let us see, uh, does the wool fiber or the fabrics or the garments made from wool uh, require let us say a fire resistant treatment? we just discussed in the last lecture. Do we require a fire retardant treatment for wool? Yes, we do require wrinkle resistance as such because of the disulfide covalent linkages between the molecules of wool, the wrinkle recovery is better. But in case we want to improve, we can require and we can do that. Water repellency, soft finish, why not? All those principles which were used to impart these type of finishing are applicable to wool depending upon the optimization that you require. So you would require these definitely. So in this respect, wool and woolen garments and products are similar to any other textile. But there are some uh, finishing treatments which will be very special to wool. Some of them are listed here. Not all of them are listed here, but some are listed here. For example, one important finishing treatment which is given to wool is called milling. So this is only for wool and not for any other fiber. So we are quite interesting, uh, interested to learn about it. Then there is something called shrink resistant wool. Well, this is 
for a reason why we want to do and it is basically for wool only. Then we may talk a little bit about setting of wool, how to make it more crease resistant or how to fix dimensions, how to fix creases and the shape, all that comes in setting. So the kind of treatment that we will discuss are going to be more special to wool. So in that sense, that's what we'll discuss. And we would also have one interesting thing which you may have seen is moth, which is an insect. You know, we did talk about, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, antimicrobial finish, but this is different. Different in the sense that this we are looking at insect which can actually you can see it moving right so some of them you may have felt it like a moth it's an insect which can move around eat the wool up fly also right now so we may be interested to see what can be done to make a woolen insect repellent so <laughs> Before we go to some of the things that we've talked about just before, all of that we're not going to do today, uh, but this will be covered in, let's say, next two, three lectures. So before we go to those finishing treatments, let's recall the wool fiber itself. You remember this name, a merino variety of wool? You remember this? It's one of the finest uh, variety of wool, Australian merino. Of course, something similar is in the New Zealand also. And some of these as crossbreed are also being uh, cultivated uh, and produced in different countries, including India. So that is uh, fine wool. The Any other name that you remember? from your previous study knowledge of the textile fibers. Hmm? There is one interesting thing you may have heard about is Lincoln wool, which is a different wool. Indian wool, there is one variety which is Chokla, there are other Malpura and other varieties in India. Generally, the native Indian wool is more coarse and uh, so is suitable more for the carpets and rugs and so on and so forth. But these days we are getting the hybrids, uh, cross breeds uh, from uh, merinos also. And of course, we are not discussing at the moment which are called category which is hair like cashmere and so on and so forth, very fine, beautiful varieties. So which one is the finer among these? Obviously, merino is the finest uh, with a fiber diameter about you know, 12, 11, 12, 15 microns type of things. So it is a good, good quality uh, wool. Which fiber would have more scales? Scales, you understand scales? The finer fibers always have more scales, okay. The coarser ones will have less scales. So that's general information about wool fiber. Chemistry wise, we understand this is a protein fiber and this protein is known as keratin. And this keratinization process takes place as the fiber is growing out of skin, all right? The sheep is moving all over. And this process of disulfide linkage formation, etc., takes place as the fiber is growing. This cross links are obviously not available when it is in the liquid state as it is being designed and developed in the sheep. 
So because if that is cross-linked, then it will not come out very easily, right? So the cross-linking uh, takes place uh, in, in as it is exposed, and uh, that's what the process of keratinization also. So first, we take up a very simple process, which is specifically designed for wool, is called the milling process, right? Milling process. Why does anybody would like to do a milling or not? During laundering or washing the textile fabrics, yarns show some shrinkage. If somebody wants to know, is the shrinkage a problem? Yeah, it's a problem. You start with making a nice, beautiful looking shirt and after washing it becomes tighter or you <laughs> roughly make a trouser and becomes a short, I mean, like not exactly in the same sense, but it is a problem. Dimensions, if changed due to washing itself, it's a problem. So which type of fibers you think uh, would be having more problematic in this sense? I suppose you have polyester fiber fabric, do you think you have a problem here during washing, laundering, shrinkage problem? Or which fiber, for example, if it is a cotton based fabric, you will face, see problem of shrinkage during washing in the cotton fabric, wool fabric, viscose, which? So obviously, the fibers which actually you may have experienced which shrink and change the dimensions after washing are generally hydrophilic fibers. So synthetic fibers like polyester, polypropylene, etc. would not show any uh, significant shrinkage by during washing. We can talk about it in more detail when we talk about synthetic fibers, but during washing the shrinkage that one would see generally would be because of the hydrophilicity. And what does it mean? It means that the intermolecular forces, bonds can be affected by water. So after any response of a molecule is dependent on intermolecular interactions and bonding. And if something happens to them, then things can be different. So if you look at this problem or this issue, then we can just say, ask this question as to why do they shrink? Of course, shrinkage is a problem and we understand which fibers shrink. So let us say, what uh, actually causes the shrinkage? Why anything, a fiber or a fabric would shrink? And we are talking about shrinkage during washing, as a result of washing, that is not, not any other shrinkage. So one important thing which one must realize is that during the washing, if there is any mechanism with which relaxation of the stresses can happen, the relaxation is a thermodynamic process which would automatically, spontaneously happen. Now, why the stresses, from where the stresses, so during manufacture, the yarn in a fabric may be stressed while they were woven or knitted. So they would have a tendency to relax. 
so we're going to put such a yarn or a fabric in water, what would happen is if they were stressed and the stress was not relieved during this process, then what would happen is the intermolecular hydrogen bonds which obviously can very easily break in water. Hydrogen bonds can break. So, if intermolecular hydrogen bond break, the molecules which are obviously under stress would like to relax, that is the relaxation and this type of shrinkage if it happens because there were stresses which were stored and because you gave an opportunity in laundering for that matter where water could penetrate, break those hydrogen bonds which can obviously form at a later stage in a different position, but molecules can then relax and shrinkage that happens due to relaxation of stresses is obviously called relaxation shrinkage. This would happen wherever there is a stress during manufacture, if it gets released, one would see shrinkage is one mechanism with which the stresses are released. So, you can actually take a yarn, expose it to moist steam, expose it to water, they will like to relax and the dimensions would be much more controllable. So, that is one. Almost every textile would go through shrinkage processes whenever there is a stress and it can be facilitated if something like this happens. Have you heard of uh, sanforization? No? Sanforization is a process or a finish we will talk about later is given to a cotton fabric to ensure it does not shrink further, it is a pre-shrinkage process. There is another name which is associated with the shrinkage process, a relaxation shrinkage process is called London shrinkage process of wool. Basically what they do is they put layers of fabrics in cold water for a long time and whatever relaxation must take place. So, it does not have to be cold water, it does not have to be uh, water at all, it could be steam. Fabric under no tension would be kept let us say in an environment which is moist and you will see dimensions getting more stabilized. So, whether it is a sanforization or a, a London, they are basically pre shrinkage, the user will not have a problem. Whatever shrinkage has to take place, it takes place in the fabric form. Okay. You get the point? So, this is because of the stresses that were stored, and if you can relax, relax those, relieve those stresses, further shrinkage may not happen, right. So, instead of first making the garment and then allowing to shrink, it is better the fabric shrinks and then you make garments. Another mechanism of shrinkage in any fabric including wool is due to swelling. Now, we again remember what are we talking about? We are talking about shrinkage during washing or laundering. Not every type of shrinkage, okay, which would mean swelling. If you put something in water, something will happen. What will happen? When you put let us say a fiber and we say a hydrophobic fiber like polyester, Will it swell when we put in water? It will not, right? We just said. So, what will swell will be hydrophobic, fi hydrophilic fiber. Hmm? 
which means cotton, viscose, wool also. Now, if you put the fiber in water, let us say this will not shrink, this will not swell. You know, we talk about swelling, it will not swell, these will swell. Okay. So, when it swells, what happens to the length of the fiber? Length of fiber, when you put in water, what happens to the length of the fiber? Will it increase or decrease? What happens to the diameter of the fiber? And remember, we are now talking about only hydrophilic fibers, yeah? because we have just said they will not swell synthetic fibers, particularly polyester, polypropylene, acrylic, etcetera, will not swell. Nylon can a little bit because of thing, but it is not going to swell too much. Hmm? What will happen to the diameter when it swells? Will it increase or decrease? It will increase. Diameter will increase. True? diameter will increase. What about the length? Will it decrease or increase? Length of the fiber? Increase or decrease? Decrease or increase? Length also increases. So, for example, there was a fiber with some dimension, you put in water, so it may increase in diameter and also in length depending upon what type of thing. So, it increases in diameter, it increases in length, so where is the question of shrinkage? You should extend. So, what are we talking about shrinkage due to swelling? Hmm? What are we talking about shrinkage due to swelling? So, if everything increases, then why are we talking about swelling induces shrinkage. Why are we talking about this? Yeah. Have you any idea? You see, definitely diameter is going to be high. Okay, diameter is high in going to increase. So, this was the diameter and let us say the diameter become this. So, what happens? Let us say we have woven fabric, simple woven fabric. There are warp and weft going around. In this state, you see, so this is let us say. Uh, Warp, uh, right. So, I have written filling. So, let us say it is filling, which means weft, and uh, this is warp, does not matter. Okay. So, one of them is warp, the other is filling. Now, let us say they swell because we have put them in water. Then, what happens? all the diameters, let us say, become this. So, let us say both 
warp and weft increase in diameter increase in diameter then this yarn has to traverse a larger path along this so how will it do it it will just come together you see this is what we consider as shrinkage due to swelling there is a structure warp weft and then both the fibers increase in diameter and now because the increased diameter the other fiber has to move around much more and traverse a longer path so how will it happen this will happen only if they start coming together so this is the length or width of the fabric it'll start shrinking lengthwise all shrinking if both the fiber both the yarns swell obviously fibers in the yarn swell which is weft and warp both then this will happen if only one of them then the other thing will happen so if suppose somebody ask a question warp is polyester weft is viscose which direction the swelling will be there there is no direction of swelling okay which direction the shrinkage will take place in the warp direction the shrinkage will take place or in the weft direction i leave this question to you but you must remember that because the diameter has increased of this yarn the other yarn has to traverse a larger path if the other yarn has to traverse a larger path the only way it can happen is that the fabric width in this direction is reduced because then only it can accommodate all right the increase in length is not too much it's very small the swelling can be very large and because of that the shrinkage takes place if both weft and warp are the ones which swell then shrinkage in both direction will take place one question i have left which you will answer later similarly if there is a twisted yarn if they shrink the outer fibers have to take traverse a larger path and so the, in length the yarn can shrink so remember the length of the fiber increases the diameter of the fiber increases but the length of yarn can reduce dimensions of fabric can reduce and therefore that's what we call as shrinkage due to swelling is that clear all right now there is another shrinkage which is associated with wool is called felting shrinkage due to felting now what is the shrinkage due to felting now we see the structure of a wool surface the wool surface has got something you remember these are called the scales this is the tip of the fiber this is the root of the fiber so the scales are projecting so this is the way the wool fiber grows you see initially it has grown a little bit then something comes it pushes and then the other thing other material comes which pushes and so something extends outside and so scales are created naturally this is a good process because the the densities are high and it protects the wool from the natural uh changes in weather whether it rains or shines or what what happens 
it protects. So, protection is meant for the protection as hard. But this can cause some interesting things which is called felting. Now, this happens because of what is known as directional frictional effect. What is this directional frictional effect? We just had the same fiber this is pointing in one direction, right? So, let us say we have this fiber and then you have these things pointing in direction towards the root of the fiber, is it? Or towards the tip. So, these scales and are pointing towards the tip. So, if you move your finger in this direction versus in this direction, you move your finger towards tip versus if you move your fingers towards root. In which case would you see more friction? When you move towards the tip, friction is more or when you move towards the root, the friction will be more? Your finger. Yeah. So, if you move towards the tip, the friction would be less if you move your finger away from the tip, the friction will be more. Is it natural? This is called the directional frictional effect. So, in one direction, there is more friction. In the other direction, there is less friction. If you have, let us say, ball, ball, ball of fibers, you know, you just keep doing this. It is softer. So, if it is soft, the fibers will try to move. So, when you press, they move, but then want to come back, the friction is more, they may not come. So, it may happen that if you keep doing this, a good number of fibers will try to move towards the direction of their root, towards the root whenever there is a chance. You wash them, you do mechanical stresses, compress, relax, compress, relax, you suddenly find the material which was like a loose mass of fibers is now more compact because there is entanglement, the fibers have moved and they are moved almost permanently. They keep moving towards the tip and that kind of a product was called a felt and the process was called felting. Can this phenomena happen in any other fiber? Cotton, viscose, polyester should not. So, this felting which happens because of directional frictional effect is specific to wool. So, we have answered this question, have we? That given in opportunity in which direction the fibers will move. Have we answered this question? Yes, we have. So, now somebody would say, is this felting a nuisance 
or a blessing. I make a knitted garment like a sweater from wool, put in a washing machine, take it out and see dimensions have changed. Some of you may have noticed that the underarms where moisture is more and obviously mechanical agitation also is more, the fabric, the knitted fabric or the sweater under this feels different than the rest of the material because it has felted in those areas, become relatively more compact in those areas and therefore you may not like it. That is the reason a lot of people would suggest that anything which is a good woolen garment, it better be dry cleaned. You know, we are hoping the dry cleaning solvent does not do what water does. So, your structure dimensions are going to remain same which you expect to happen. So, in some sense, this is a nuisance that your dimensions can change because felting leads to shrinkage. Felting leads to compact structure. So, a knitted garment was not a compact structure, it was flexible, fluffy, it contained a lot of air within the yarn and therefore, the insulation that you were getting. Suddenly, it becomes a compact structure, the air is no more entrapped in that system. So, it does not feel good and of course, dimensions have changed. So, in some sense, this is a nuisance. One would like to like it that if it does not happen, you know, that be the case. But if you are smart enough, you may be able to utilize, exploit this property itself. You have seen some woolen blankets, real woolen blankets, not acrylic blankets, woolen blankets. In this case, let us say it is a blessing. So, let us count the blessing first. We will talk about the nuisance later. So, woolen blanket is a product which people use it. It is compact, relatively much more compact. If you try to unravel the yarns from blanket is not going to be easy. If you have a normal woven fabric, you can remove the warp, remove the weft from the sides and keep removing and unraveling the, the fabric. But if you try to do that in woolen blanket, it is not there. You cannot do it very easily. You must have seen it. Have you used a woolen blanket? So, this woolen blanket is produced by the process which is called milling. This is in a way is a finishing process and what are we doing? We want to make a fuller, denser wool fabric like a blanket. Sometimes the milling is also known as fulling. So, this is a process, we do something and how do we do it? by exploiting the felting property of wool. So, thing which we said is going to cause problems is the one which you like to use so that you get a better product which is called a blanket or a felt. Now, of course, the felt can be made by different technologies using different kind of fibers. 
but the term felt and the felting came from wool. So, this is like a non-woven system. You don't really have to do uh, anything. It can still make a felt, but blankets are product which are woven products, but they go through a process called milling. If they go through the process called milling, what happens is during this milling process, felting happens. Now we know what is felting, where the fibers may have moved from their position to another position, they keep moving till they cannot move further. And which direction every fiber will try to move? Wool fiber in the direction of the root, keep moving till they cannot move further, then they will do jamming. And this is because of scales which give the differential friction, one direction friction is more, the other direction friction is less. There is a differential friction and so it happens. So entanglement takes place and you make a compact structure. This is milling. milling. For this process to take place, three things are essential. And what is the process we are talking about? Felting, where the fibers must move. There should be moisture. So some kind of a lubrication. If there is a little bit of heat, that means pliability. If you have pressures, so they have, they are forced to change their uh, position, the fibers. And so you will get a felt with an entangled fiber structure and more compact structure, which we thought was a good idea. And that is the process of milling. Have you seen a winch? A machine which is similar looking as winch can be used to do this milling or fulling process. So the machine may look like this, the fabric in the rope form for that matter is, can be milled. You can do it in open width also, but this diagram which I have used, uh, we are doing it in rope form for example. So there is this portion which is called the spout. These are the squeeze rollers. There is some liquor, it could be there or you can also have some spray system which can spray the liquor on this rope. It's a endless rope of a wool fabric which needs to be subjected to milling process, all right. So you take this rope, so this goes up because of the squeeze rollers and they pull also, guiding rollers, guides. This is called spout, this is called a throat through which this is directed and it is pulled, put some pressure here so that the fabric folds in a wet state, so there is a pressure, so you have mechanical pressure, the temperatures can be increased. You can have a heating system, so temperatures can be increased. It's a moisture, so you have moisture because you have liquid which could be aqua solutions. So all the three things which were required, the moisture, the heat and the pressure are going to be applied. Continuously this rope can move up, go to the spout, then it is thrown onto the slanted surface and keeps moving down, goes into some liquor which may be stored and then is pulled up and goes through the throat and the squeeze roll and the spout continuously for whatever time is optimum time and then at the end they you do washing and you have a product 
which is milled product, which is felted already, it may become like a blanket. So, sometimes different conditions can be used. You may be probably quite uh, aware that wool fabrics are relatively quite stable, more resistant to acids. They are susceptible to alkaline conditions. So, nobody will use a strong alkaline condition, but you may use a strong acidic condition. So, if your solutions are acidic in nature, pH below 7, then you have acid milling, this is called and uh, the pH could be 2, but does not have to be, it can be higher based on what you want to do, but it is in the acidic range. Temperature is not very high, just little above the room temperature, which could be 25 degrees, so you go about 20 degrees. 20, above approximately and just keep doing this milling process in a winch type of machine or a which sometimes is called a rotary milling machine and keep doing this for a required amount of time maybe 45 minutes to 1 hour wash it and use so this will be acid milling conditions alkaline milling or soap milling is to give a bit of a lubrication okay and neutral of course will be there, but alkaline when we say it is alkaline soap, but we are not going to go to pH of 11 or pH of uh, for example, 12, 13, that is not high pH of course, it will not be stable. So, either a neutral thing or alkaline soap could be used should this milling that be the good. So, you have a nice neutral soap, you can do soap milling, it may take more time. The same machine can be used for scouring or similar machine can be used for scouring also. The spout may not be so much if necessary, but it can be used. What happens if we use colored woolen yarns? So, your yarn is dyed and then you weave the fabric and then take it to the milling operation. You remember the dyeing is also done in acidic medium and if you keep doing this uh, for a period, dye can come out also, right. But do we do it? Have you seen blanket which have got some designs? If they are designed, they are not printed. The yarns were dyed, the material was woven and then subjected to milling. A woolen blanket you may have seen this is dyed some checkered kind of designs. So, you have let us say red or a black dyed yarn or maybe more number of colors can be used. You can have for example, some greens in between also and you will get a different checkered design all right. And this fabric which has used colored woolen yarns now can be milled. So, this design will go through this and you will see at the end. What do you see? This so called design is it merged, the green is merged into the red and the black and so on and so forth and something like this. Do you see that or is a very sharp line like a printed garment that you see the checks very clearly in a blanket. Do you see that? You do not see that because the fibers started moving during this milling process. It could be a green, green dyed fiber which is moving into the red dyed fiber or a black dyed fiber. So, there is a migration taking place all over. The things are becoming complex and suddenly you find the so called checkered design which looked very, very sharp in the woven fabric before milling, after milling it is a very diffused design, but you can still see yeah there is green, there is red, there is and there is some check you can see that, but it is diffused. That mean that shows that the fibers have moved from their original positions because you have given 
an opportunity for them to move in the smelling process. But because of this, a set of acid dyes have to be used, which will not come out very easily during this process. And some of these dyes, therefore, are called milling dyes. You remember, the name has come from the milling process itself. So you have found, you have to find some dyes which are not going to easily come out. All right? They will be called the milling dyes. So acid milling dyes would demonstrate more wet fastness. Okay? They are dyed at a little higher pH, maybe uh, higher than this pH. The ones which are dyed are called leveling dyes. Leveling dyes, if you may recall, are the dyes which give uniform dyeing on a fabric. They can go to one side, if there are more dyes on that side, it can come out partially, then go to the side where the dyes concentration is less and so they keep leveling by themselves during the dyeing process. But we are interested in other class of dye if felting and milling is the process which have to be employed. They are called milling dyes and they will be dyed in neutral to a little alkaline or towards more neutral like higher pH 5 to 8. 8 is an alkaline side but not highly alkaline. Right? So now you have milling dyes, specially designed, the molecular structure, molecular weight is high, I find difficult to come out. One of them, I will just give you an example, an acid blue 93 is one dye, which is a class of milling dye, right? See this very large structure, this is a lot of phenyl groups, aromatic groups. Of course, you have solubilizing groups so that water soluble. Because it is being dyed, let us say in alkaline medium, you may actually have a situation there is a plus charge here as well, but mostly it is going to be negative, does not have to be. But this is a milling dye. And if you dye with these type of dyes, then the dyed yarns can be used for weaving the fabric for blankets and then blankets can be formed by milling process. So what have we learned today? We have learned about directional frictional effect which is so specific to wool and because of this why wool felts? It felts because the fibers have a tendency to move in the direction of their roots. We have learnt about a milling process, a milling finishing process and about some dyes which are suitable for this process because we would like to use pre-dyed yarns. No? They are called the milling dyes. That is what we will learn today. In the next class, we will look at this felting property not as the blessing in disguise, but we try to understand the nuisance factor of this compaction process, making the system more dense. If we do not want, then what do we do? That is what we will talk about in the next lecture. See you later. All the best. Have fun. Mm -hmm.